Well, guys, we're getting ready to wrap up this conversation around fatherhood with part two, part two from a woman's perspective. So come on by, sit back and relax and join me on the conversation with Corintha Austin. See you there. Come and listen, laugh, and link up on real life topics and subjects that matter to you here on the, the conversation with current the Austin. Well, we are back. We are back today. I have a special guest. Um, she's coming from um, the podcast unapologetically fierce with faith. She is one of the tribe members tribe members on that podcast her name is marina and i asked her to come and talk to me about her thoughts on fatherhood should we celebrate father's day you know hey okay we need love too <laughs> all right we need love too but again i want you to guys to give her a big hand clap my friend um you know and she's a little spunky too so so you guys just watch out watch out all right come on marina let's 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 let's, let's get to this let's get to this Hey, hey, hey. Hi, so, Corinthus. How, how are you? I'm, I, I am doing good. I'm, I'm excited that you're on the show. I, 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 yeah, I'm excited. So, I'm excited to be here. So thanks for having me. I was me. able to I'm get so one of you guys here. on here. I've been, able to, I've been <laughs> trying. So, so, so you know what? I'm, I'm just going to just jump on into this conversation. So I've recently been, you know, out there on the internet and YouTube mm -hmm. and stuff. And there, there was this thing where um, I ran across where some women felt that Father's Day was just overrated. It was, it was just overrated in that fatherhood, you know, because so, this just happens to be a, a single mother, you know, um, with that, you know, yeah, you know, we're, we're doing that job too. But mm -hmm. what my question is for you, do you think, do you think Father's Day is overrated? No, I, th I think we don't do enough to, um, to celebrate fathers, um, just as a society in general. I think it's, it's not overrated. I think we probably could um, do a lot more to support our fathers who, who are out there doing amazing things for their family. I mean, and there are plenty of them. Sadly, they go unnoticed and sometimes overshadowed because there are a great deal of single moms out there like myself um, who are carrying the load. But no, I do not think it's overrated at all. It's a very important holiday. Okay, so so and and, and, and again, um, so I want to get your perspective on this, right? And you know, I've I've interviewed a, a, a couple of, a couple of women, and you know, I, I've I've got different perspectives. So my thing is that: Do you think having a father or a father figure, uncle, you know, mm -hmm. um, grandfather, Granddad. is important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, grandparent is important in the development of your child. I you, think do, so. Do you think that, that you think I, that's important? I think it's important. You know, I don't think it's the only way to um, raise a child. I mean, I think lots of oh, yeah, no, people no, no, come, no, no, from, no. come from homes where, you know, where it is just mother figures or maternal figures um, and, and they turn out just fine. But I think for the, for a, for the development of a child or a family in general, I think it is important to have a father figure and have that male perspective on on life because it's such a big part of um society i mean we don't we live in a culture where or in a world where you know 50 percent female 50 percent male roughly um you're going to be in a workforce with other individuals who are the opposite sex i'm speaking from the woman's perspective um so i think it's definitely important to have that that figure um in, in the family dynamic in some ways so sometimes granddads uncles um, or even friends, you know, very, very close friends of the family that can play that role. But I think it is it's a healthy thing to have, to have that, um, that point of view in your life. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Now, now, now this, now this is going to be an interesting question. So I, I'm really curious how you're going to answer this. All right. So as a man, we see fatherhood from a whole different perspectives okay some men see fatherhood as just being a provider uh -huh. you know financial support some see fatherhood as as being um oh i, I showed up for the game <laughs> okay mm -hmm. no just, mm -hmm. I mean, just being very realistic mm 
Yeah. And then some is like, you know, um, that, that fatherhood, you know, uh, I'm a protector and I'm a, provi- you know, I'm, I'm that protector. So with, 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 with that all being said, do you think, do, do you think that, um, do you think it is important from a mother's perspective, again, single, divorced, um, or married, um, regardless, do you think it's important that, that the mother supports that person or father or that person, uh, as we were talking about, who is fulfilling or acting in that role? Um, towards the, yes. Towards, towards <laughs> the child. Yes. Okay, yeah, I think, okay. you know, I think it should be a partnership. And when two people come together to have children, whether that's um, planned or not, which lots of times uh-huh. it's not the case, um, but I think once the child is involved, I think it should be a partnership between those two individuals of how to bring up the child. Some of that really just comes, comes down to, as you know, your podcast is so well, so, you know, very well puts it in such a great way, which is the conversation. This is how we, how you, um, communicate having these kind of conversations with your partner and figuring out what, what the dynamics are going to be. So there are those parents who, you know, they check that box of being a financial provider and that's it. And I think a lot of times where the, the uh, conflict happens is because maybe the other party is thinking like you need to be plugging in and doing more than just providing, right? But if you uh, have this understanding that that's it, I've checked that box, I've done my job, now we're going to yeah. have some conflict. I think it's important to have that conversation and figure out whether or not you plan to have a family or not, just kind of figure out what are you bringing to the table what am I bringing to the table? But then supporting one another in that because, you know, it may very well be a situation where the, the, this other party hasn't been modeled for them and they don't know how to be that supportive dad that comes in after you've had a long day and sits at the dinner table and talks to their kids. Like for a lot yeah. of dads, especially mine growing up, it, that was like a tough, he had a tough exterior, you know, it was very soft on the inside, but he had a tough exterior. So he wasn't ever going to sit down with me and like, you know, let me cry on his shoulder, but he was a great provider, right? So I think for my mom, she understood that about him and, and was able to support support him as best as she could, you know, with that, um, with the fact. So she was, you know, the warm one, the one that we went to when we needed to talk things out. That makes sense. Um, but I do think it's important for, for the partner, whether you're married or not, you know, for the mother of the children to be very supportive of the dad, I think. I think if your child is what um, what your focus is, right, and it's it's about the best interest of the kid, then that's going to come easy. The, the supporting oh, the other party, you well, would hope that, anyway, right? Okay. Now, now, so, so I'm going to ask you, what advice okay. would you give us on father? I know, right? In that sort of weird way. Like, wait a <laughs> minute. Mom, right? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> right? I'm glad you well, asked. No, I don't and know and what he, I'm going to say. <laughs> I got to think about no, it. And, he, and, and he, here's what I mean. Uh, you're right. Um, so I'm 50 and so, and, and I, it, this hits me all the time because I have like my son, he's like four, right? And I can count the number of times my father hugged me mm-hmm. or, or told me he loved me. You, you know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I find that, that, um, like my wife, she's, you know, I, I like for instance, I'm, you know, I'm a big teddy bear, right? Yeah, I have a big bark. But I realized how, I didn't understand how important that was until, you know, you have a daughter of 30, but from a boy perspective, how important that was to let him, like, hug him and let him know that you love him and that, that you know, that, that what well, we call that mushy stuff, right? Sure, right. <laughs> you know, right, the, the, yeah. those non-manly things. So, so again, so, so let's say you have a, a, a younger brother or, you know, a, a, a friend or something like that. I mean, what, what would you, or recommendations or, or suggestions, what would you tell dads? What would you tell dads? Like, like how, how would you tell dads, how can they be more engaging when it comes to their children? You know, I think sometimes maybe the rough exterior thing and the not being able to like, you know, have that mushy stuff happen a lot of times comes from like uh, being afraid of being vulnerable. Um, I I think anyway, this is my perspective on it, but I think what I would tell any, especially a new dad who hasn't had children yet, that your children light up when you're around, right? Like they think that you're everything, especially the really, really younger kids. 
um, as they grow up and they start to, you know, have their own personalities and stuff, they may see you a little differently, but still in all, it's just unconditional love that comes from your children. So I think, you know, understanding that you can be mushy with your kids and you're never going to offend them or hurt their feelings or they're not going to think any less of you, um, uh, is important, but also knowing that, that they do need that. And I think identifying with that part of your childhood, like my dad wasn't that way and I wish he was. Um, I accept who he was and I'm, I'm good with it. I love my dad very much. He's now passed, but, um, I'm good with the relationship that we had, but I wish that we had that. Right. So I think knowing that if I were a man, I would want to make sure that my children didn't go without that, you know, having that, um, I call it the soft, soft place to land, you know, so if you're having a rough day, I use that as an example, but like just being able to come in and talk to your dad and knowing it's an open door and he's going, he's never going to judge me. He's always going to be there for me and give me sound advice, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, just oh. like your kids love you so much and they're not ever going to think any differently of you if you're mushy with them. Or even emotional, just like seeing, seeing a man cry. I can count on less than one hand how many times I saw my dad cry and sadly it was at funerals. Like, wow. you know, I lost, I lost I a few of my siblings. Once. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can count once that my dad just once, I, and it was a tear. It wasn't even crying. It was just a yeah, tear. yeah, just for one escape. He probably did his very best to keep it back. And you know, and then he turned to the side. You know, so you, you could barely get the tear in and stuff of that, yeah. uh, stuff yeah. of that nature. And so, yeah, you know. So well, no, I think no, that I, signals to children like it's not okay to be sensitive, right? And I get where it comes from, from the male mm-hmm. perspective, especially that generation that probably both of our dads came from. I'm 41. My dad um, yep. lived to be 75, but that was a couple years ago. Um, and I think I get where that came from, but I also feel like this is, you know, the world's changing. And I think it is important for our sons, especially, to see that it is okay to be emotional. Like that makes you human. <laughs> Spoiler alert, we all have emotions, right? So it's just that some of us are really, really good at like, you know, tamping it down, which I don't think is healthy. So that's another conversation. Okay, okay. So so let's talk about Father's Day. See, that, okay. see that's like one of my pet peeves. We always just get okay. we always just get a a a, a tie or a shirt. <laughs> I was gonna say you know, are you gonna are you gonna say you got a tie a couple years in a row? Yeah, a it's shirt, true, though. <laughs> a tie. I want something good. I'll give me an Xbox. Okay. Sure, yeah. Golf Why not, clubs. right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay. okay. So yeah, I'll start I mean, the petition. So, I think you need an Xbox. I think dads <laughs> should get Xboxes and PlayStation Fives and whatever they need. See that? That's what I need. Okay. So, <laughs> so but, and the reason I bring it up is because, um, and actually, it's funny when you think about it, right? There are like no songs about Father's Day or just dads. You know, you got you got songs about. Mothers, you know, mm-hmm. you got the, uh, you got, you got some, e- everything, and so you know, and I understand mothers are very, mothers are a very, a very integral part of a child's life, and you know, you you guys go through some stuff. You guys take that, I call yeah. that emotional burden that we are scared to death of, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, and and just sort of kind of like hold it together, right? For for you. And for everybody, and, and and for the child, um, but I'm just like, come on, we need some love too. Sure, we need. I 100 percent agree. We need some. So love you have too. a pet peeve, yeah. I, I think yeah. I think what happens is that sometimes, I mean, it really just depends on. It, it might be unfortunate that Mother's Day comes right before Father's Day, right? So it's probably a little yeah. bit of like reciprocation. <laughs> like, how how thoughtful were you on Mother's Day? For a lot of for a lot of moms, not me personally. My only excuse was that my now ex husband's uh, birthday is sometimes it's it's that same week, so sometimes it'll land right on exactly the same day. Um, so it could be a lot <laughs> to try to honor both of those very special occasions. My birthday is the day after Christmas, so we kind of always looked at it like you know. My birthday kind of lumps up with Christmas. His lumps up with Father's Day. So we would just try our best to honor both holidays together, if that makes sense. So, like, I just understood that for my birthday and Christmas, it would be, you know, relatively small in comparison to Christmas. And same thing with him and his birthday and Father's Day. But I did my best to try to make sure that he felt um, appreciated. And I still do. I mean, he's the father of my children. Okay. and We have a great relationship. Um, but yeah, but I'm with you. I do agree that I think men probably father those really, really um, connected dads who are there working just as hard as mom. I feel like 
Mm-hmm. And I shouldn't even have to qualify. Dads in general deserve deserve to the accolades, deserve all of the the attention, and then they should have a day. So I'm with you there. I think I think it's important to give a gift that really says thank you. You know, for all thank that you, you do. See, I I feel better now. I'm feeling good about this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> really, really good. Well, about you this. know what's important is what does your partner think? You know, and maybe. <laughs> Maybe the perspective sometimes in the family is different. And maybe if you grew up in a household where dads were just kind of like a cog in a machine and not really very important, um, then maybe, you know, some women enter relationships with kind of thinking, yeah, mom's everything. You know, she's the star of the show. As you mentioned, keeping everything together, which is generally true for most families, I think. Um, But that doesn't mean that dad isn't just as important. I think it's important to know your partner or the person that you're at children with and understand where they come from, how they view fatherhood. Yes. These conversations need to happen, hopefully before there are children involved, but especially once there are kids in the family. Well, I, I think, thank you. So, so this conversation that we're having, do, do you think mm-hmm. there's, there's like value in it? Because again, I, the reason why I wanted a woman's perspective, because I think sometimes like when I talk to other guys, like I, I talked to some guys about fatherhood in different aspects. And, you know, I, I had the, the dad who he just became a dad. He like, what am I doing? Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, good question. You know? but, but I, I wanted to give the, I wanted to give the, the listeners that, Hey, you know what? There's a different component. There's the way that we see it, mm-hmm. but you know, I mean, you guys play a big part of that. And, and there's the way that, 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 you know, how women see fatherhood in in respect to it, you know, help helping raise the children. So, um, so I, I I hope you think this conversation has value. <laughs> it does. I so. actually I really think it has. I think we don't do it enough, to be quite honest. And I think the opposite sexes have their defined roles a lot of times, and that's it. Everybody just kind of falls in line behind that, and then we don't spend enough time. Whether it's, you know, in a platonic friendship or, you know, relatives or husband and wife, ex-husband and ex-wife, et cetera. I think, I think it's important to have these conversations. I think they are valuable and they don't happen enough um, so, that, wow. so that there's a clearer understanding of what everybody's expectations are and no, then exactly. that way no one's let down. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, I, uh, wow. Thank, I'm telling you, thank you, Rena, for coming on. But I want, I want you to tell people about unapologetically fierce okay i got yes. you here sure. i want yes. the people to know yes. what Come and you check guys us out. are doing just let them know like yes. like what you guys are talking about what you guys yes. are doing yeah so you know we're a tribe of four individual women you know led by our friend faith who's amazing um and she she put together this podcast and we're four women from four different walks of life um, we have a lot in common but a lot of differences as well um, and we cover topics that are just, you know, I think really relatable and important. So um, just right now we're, we're, we have been recording um, some episodes on self-care and how, why it's important and different aspects of that. So, you know, what, it's, what fitness is about, what mental health is about, that kind of thing. Um, but we cover topics like, you know, relationships and um, the dynamics in relationships, like between mother and daughter and females, um, peers and friends, things like that. Um, so just, you know, Important topics, but from different perspectives. I think that's how I would put it. And then we have some fun, some some fun conversations as well. So conversations about you know relationships with men, and you know my favorite, uh, one of my favorite episodes was about the f boy. (laughs) I won't use the word, but um, (laughs) so you know, lots of fun. We you know we sip, we sip our and some drinking. You got to put the drinking in there too. There there is some (laughs) drinking going on. Occasionally, glasses of wine, (laughs) one or three, or maybe four. Um, and then we spill the tea. So that's, that's, that's our podcast. It's a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun recording and having these conversations. And I really hope you'll check it out and come, come hang out with us. Wow. Wow. Well, Amira, again, I really appreciate you taking out the time. Now, I got some more upcoming subjects that are deep, that are deep, that I might ask you to come back and, 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 and just talk to me uh, about, especially there's one I'm thinking that you might be good about um, okay. self care. Self care, self care, and 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 most people think self care is just what is lopsided from a woman's perspective. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. But self care is really everybody. It's the kids. It's you. It's it's men. It's it's everyone needs. Especially you know, you're in the house. Twenty four seven. You're seeing the same walls. You're not seeing your friends, your family, your loved ones. Yeah. Your, you know, yeah. it. it, it uh, it's you have to, super crucial. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to take care of yourself. During these times, yeah, and, and yeah, you know, you're 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 raising children, you're taking care of them, but but sometimes you have to step away and take care of yourself. So I, I'm, yeah. we don't have to bring you back. We don't have to. Sure. Bring you back, yeah, I, I enjoyed this. This was it. actually no. fun. This yeah. is <laughs> it's more than just a bubble bath, ladies and gentlemen. You know, sometimes it's it's having these you know conversations. This is self care. You know, just learning about what you just asking questions and wondering in, from an internal perspective of like why do I think the way I think you know just even starting exactly. there and that's why our self-care series um even encompasses mental health because I think that's a huge part of it so I'd love to come back and talk about that some more with you cool cool again thank you thank you thank you well guys that that wraps up that that's it that's that's the show that's the show and again remember without the conversation we can't have the understanding Thank you for being part of the conversation with Corinthus Austin, brought to you by CKJ Live. Come back and visit again to share more real life topics and stories that matter to you. And remember, without the conversation, we can't have the understanding.